Hi everyone, it's time for Good Week Israel. Well, we'll give you ILTV's latest positive highlights. So get ready to smile because coming up, the Kotel or Western Wall in Jerusalem gets an apparently badly needed facelift. Danielle from Kosher.com teaches how to make tomato soup with cheddar matzo balls. And finally, stay tuned because we are going to learn how to realize what we need from our loved ones. One of Jerusalem's most famous landmarks getting a badly needed facelift, but don't be too quick to judge. After all, if you were over 3,000 years old and had been attacked 52 times, captured and recaptured 45 times, besieged 23 times, and then completely destroyed twice, you'd be lucky to look this good. Judaism's third holiest site, the Kotel, also known as the Second Temple's Western Wall, is finally starting to really show its age. Built by King Herod the Great more than 2,000 years ago, the stones showing scars and cracks from the millennia of wear and tear. Conservators from the Israel Antiquities Authority then, beginning heavy conservation work, such as injecting the stones with limestone-based grout to preserve and reinforce them. IAA head conservator Yossi Vaknin adding that this is the best possible method of healing the stones. Generally speaking, the wall is inspected twice a year ahead of Passover and Rosh Hashanah, and in preparation for millions of visitors, with all operations carried out to ensure that the Western Wall continues standing tall for another two millennia. כמו שכבר נאמר, יש אבנים עם לב אדם. אבני הכותל נוסעות איתם אלפי שנות היסטוריה. ראו מראות שעברו על ירושלים, וכמובן שכל מי שמגיע לכותל מתחבר גם לרגש שהכותל מעביר אליו. Next time you're in Israel, why not stay outside of Jerusalem or Tel Aviv? ILTV went to check out a luxurious boutique hotel in the picturesque Gadera. Check this out. The boutique hotel trend has been steadily growing in Israel, popping up in more and more cities. Today we're going to visit the newest one to hit the streets outside of Israel's center that also offers one of the best fine dining experiences this town has to offer. In the city of Gadera, about 45 minutes south of Tel Aviv, sits the brand new boutique hotel Lear. This modern hotel adds some style and flair to the city with its chic interior design, plus a scenic and vibrant rooftop complete with an infinity pool. What's really interesting and unique about this hotel, I think, is that it has that Tel Aviv vibe, you know, with the music and the, the bar, but it's actually not in Tel Aviv at all. It's in a peaceful town uh, right. south of, this, of the center, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me about Gadera. It's a small city, Gadera, close to Rehovot, Ashdod. Mm -hmm. It's a very special place, like an old city. We have here a lot of nice uh, streets, and we have the Lear Sands Hotel. <laughs> Tal and her husband, Sachi, have always dreamed of opening up a hotel, and they've made their dream a reality, proudly launching their new boutique hotel, which also boasts a top-of-the-line restaurant. It's a luxury experience hotel. We want every person who come here to have the sensory experience, um, the culinary side, the spa side, the view, the smell, we have a unique smell here, all the arts in the, in the hotel. The hotel consists of 28 rooms, with each room being different from the next. So, this is my favorite suite in the hotel. Wow, mm -hmm. I can see why, it's beautiful. This is one of uh, two rooms we have with a spa balcony. We have a private jacuzzi Ooh. and a private sauna. Wow, this is beautiful. Yes. I would love to stay here mm. for the night. <laughs> very romantic, very yeah. nice. And look at the view. It feels like yes. you're in the middle of a jungle. Something that really helps this place to stand out is the restaurant, which not only hosts hotel guests, but is also frequented by area residents. The goal was to bring culinary excellence outside of Israel's center and features a menu of upscale Mediterranean and Italian fusion cuisine. I have a passion to, for traveling. I explore uh, food all the time. And I want to see the uh, new stuff, the new food, the new plate, the new technique. And I learned from them. I come to back to my restaurant and 
I do my dream. And we make a molecular in a little bit, we make a simple, we make traditional, we make everything and we put it on, in, on one plate. The menu is very seasonal, taking advantage of whatever veggies are in season at the time. Asaf uses herbs and some veggies that are grown in the hotel's garden for a touch of the true farm-to-table experience. And it's ready? Yeah, of course. I love dishes That's that it. have so much color and herbs. Yeah. It's a beautiful summer dish. This is the eggplant cream, black eggplant cream. We, we mix it with the skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's we take the egg, eggplant, yeah, we uh, burn it on the fire, an open fire, and with the skin we make uh, the wow. sauce. This is puff from Bourbon. Mm. Okay. okay. That adds like the crunch to the tartar. Yeah. We burn it a little bit the egg. This is one of my favorite that we the dish that we make here. It's like the Italian dish. Uh, it's a scallop, the first scallop. Okay, it's going inside the plancha. Now we're making the risotto with the cream cheese, with parmesan and with the white almond. We have a carrot cream with zafran. We have a powder with the panko and a lot, a lot of zest of lemon. We put on top the, the scallop. We start with the risotto. And now, get ready for an incredibly easy dinner recipe brought to you by Danielle from kosher.com. This time, she's making tomato soup with cheddar matzo balls. Take a look. Hey everyone, it's Danielle again, back on kosher.com with another really easy dinner recipe. I am so excited to share this with you guys. Today we're making tomato soup with cheddar matzo balls. Oh, that's right, I said matzo balls with cheese inside of them. They're so good, it's like a better version of grilled cheese and tomato soup, and my family loves it. It's a huge hit, and it's such a joke to make, and I can't wait to show you guys, so let's get started. First things first, before we get the soup on, we wanna make the matzo balls so that we can get them into the fridge to chill. So here we go, I have matzo meal, meal, not veal. I'm gonna add in salt, baking powder, Give that a mix, get those dry ingredients incorporated. And onto the wet ingredients. We have three eggs, I'm just gonna crack one more. We want four eggs, let's just check it, make sure our egg is clean. Drop that in, add our oil. We're gonna use our fork to just whisk that up really good. I personally like it when the egg and oil is all emulsified. I don't like seeing any egg white pieces in my matzo bowl. That kind of like, I don't know, I just don't like it. Now we're gonna go in with our cheddar cheese, just some regular shredded grated cheddar cheese. If you don't have cheddar cheese, you can use mozzarella, but personally, in my mind, grilled cheese means orange cheese, and since this is a tomato soup, that's what I went with, but use what you have. Now we're just going to add our matzo meal mixture to the bowl. Give this a really, really quick mix just until everything's incorporated. All right, this is looking good now. Wanna just scrape everything off. You wanna get a piece of saran wrap, put the saran wrap directly on the matzo meal mixture. And we're gonna pop this into the fridge for half an hour and make the soup. All right, everybody, it is soup time. Okay, first things first, a little bit of butter because butter. <laughs> Next up, we're just gonna add a whole onion. I don't cut it up, I don't do anything. This way, before I put in my matzo bowls, I fish out my onions, I fish out the garlic, and I don't have any children complaining. It's amazing. So we're just gonna stir that around, just to sort of like get the flavor out of them. I just cut, you could see the top off the onion and the bottom so that it exposes a little bit more of that onion flavor. Just give that a really quick stir. 
Just as you're starting to smell the onion and the garlic come together with the butter, that's when you know it's time. We're gonna go in with three cans of tomato sauce. Okay, now this is super important. Not marinara sauce. Not from a glass jar, from a can, just tomato sauce. No other flavor in there. Only tomato sauce. Can number one. Now this is really important, guys. Secret ingredient, we're gonna refill each of these cans with water and then add that to the soup. So I'm just adding in the last can of water now. I'm gonna go in with salt and pepper. And we're just gonna stir it up. And that's it, guys. The extent of your work for the tomato soup. The whole thing, some cans, an onion, garlic, no chopping, no dicing. Just throw everything in a pot, mix it, we're gonna bring it up to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and then make our matzo balls and throw them in. And for me, this is the perfect recipe because anyways, Eric Yantif, Eric Shabbos, when I'm in a bind, I need something quick, I'm already making matzo balls. So what does it take for me to double the recipe, make a little bit extra, and just add cheese to half? Nothing, it's so easy, so yummy, and so delicious. Okay, so let's get our matzo balls and start rolling. Step one, remove the saran wrap. Step two, dip your hands in a little bit of oil. I like to do this whenever I make matzo balls because the dough can be sticky. But really, step two should be take the cover off the pot. Step two A, dip your hands in oil. Okay, we're just gonna grab a little bit of the matzo balls. I like to make these mini, um, just cause there's more and then the feel, kids feel like they got so many. And we're just gonna drop it into the boiling hot soup. Just gonna take the bowl, put it in the sink, wash my hands quickly. We're gonna let these matzo balls boil for about half an hour, and then we're ready to serve. When your kitchen smells so ridiculously good that you just can't take it anymore, you know your soup's ready. So here we go, let's plate this up. Oh my gosh. Look at those matzo balls! They soaked up so much of the tomato soup and the cheese in the matzo balls causes some steam to be released so there's like a little crack in each matzo ball that lets more of that tomato-y goodness in. It's so good. Okay, let's plate this up now. Just gonna grab a ladle. Four matzo balls. I'll leave them. They're that good. Oh, it smells amazing in here. I just wish you guys could smell through the camera. Look at that, look at that. Can you see the beauty of that matzo ball there? Oh my gosh, okay, I'm going in for a bite. Here we go. Okay, bye everybody. We need to be alone. Moving on now, investment channel Smart Funding knows how to make the right choices for you, especially during a corona economy. In 2020, investments worth billions of dollars were placed into Israeli startup companies. This actually a large increase compared to 2019. And Hanna Rifkin reporting. The COVID-19 pandemic has put world economies on pause, activity in entire sectors shutting down instantly, while others slowing significantly. But interestingly enough, those wanting to invest during this challenging period, looking to private companies on the verge of their breakthrough, gaining momentum. Well, for the past year, we see a clear trend. More and more experienced investors extract their investments out of markets such as real estate or tourism and invest in private startup companies. Smart funding, finding and representing groundbreaking up-and-coming Israeli startups in their research and development stages, making them reliable during the uncertainty of the pandemic economy. And each company selected by smart funding is thoughtful. One of the principles that guide us is that it is smart for your portfolio and it's also smart for humanity. We make sure to work with companies that will not only succeed in business, but would also contribute to humanity and the planet. Companies must also pass an array of screening and testing processes put in place for reducing investment risk and increasing chances of success. 
Some Israeli companies represented by smart funding, including Ella Pharma, which is developing necrosis treatments, food tech company Solvit, which finds functional and nutritional solutions for food, and Thomas Medical, which is now expanding its patent applications. Exclusive news and updates about opportunities in Israel are frequently provided to Smart Funding's international investor community. To learn more and join the community, visit www.smartfunding.co.il. And finally, Rabbi Falchi from Kosher.com brings us more food for thought. The people in our lives come in all different types, but it's those who challenge us and those who encourage us who can really affect who we become. Find out the difference and learn how to realize what you need from your loved ones. Almost every single one of us has experienced what it feels like to be inspired by a role model. Who's yours? The greatest hero the Jewish people have ever known has to be Moshe. He brings the Jewish people out of Egypt, brings them to the Torah, almost to the precipice of entering the land of Israel itself. But who was it that formed this amazing character? There are two women in Moshe's young life. One who's called Yocheved, his mother, and one called Miriam, his sister. But the Torah, right in the beginning of Shemot, has two different names for them. It calls them Shifra and Pua, respectively. Why are their names changed to Shifra and Pua? Rashi explains that the reason they were given these alternate names is because Yocheved and Miriam were the midwives in Egypt. One of them was called Shifra because she was Mishaperet et Havlad. She would fix the child, shape the child if something had come out incorrectly during the process of birth. Miriam, on the other hand, was called Pua because she would coo to the child, making the kinds of noises we all make when we're holding babies. Poo, poo, coo, coo, whatever it might be. Those two things are crucial in the process of the birth of a child, but are also crucial in the process of raising children and indeed influencing and encouraging people. Mishaperet is when you take a hands-on approach. You fix something about somebody. You push them to do something. Some of us will remember a grandmother that said, get out of bed. The one that forced us to get that first job didn't give us a choice. And we owe our greatness, we say years later to them. They pushed us, made us, formed us, fashioned us. But then there's a very different kind of role model. The role model of Pua. One that talks the same language as we do mimics the sound of our voice, encourages us. When we share our dreams with them, they echo them back to us. Never getting involved, but always being that reassuring voice that carries us from one stage in our lives to the next stage forward. Think back, that teacher that you had, that grandmother or grandfather, father or mother, father-in-law, mother-in-law, whatever it was, the ones that encouraged you to move forward, to do something different, special, bold in your life, were they shifras or were they puas? Did they make you or did they encourage you? I think in different times of our lives, those people can sometimes be both. And in different times of our lives, we can sometimes need both. But the interesting thing is that it's not just true about role models and people. It's also true about situations. We experience moments in our life which are shifra moments. They don't encourage us. They force us to change. They mold us in a way where we almost have no choice. We're brought to a new or a better reality through some experience, good, positive, or sometimes really difficult. But the aftermath of that situation is that we are undeniably changed. And there are situations in life which are poor situations. They give us a certain sense of gratitude, a certain sense of reassurance that the way we are or that the path that we are treading is the right one. Notice the moments in your life. Are they shifras 
or are they pours? A young woman came to speak to me once and she was distraught. She was so upset. She told me, my whole life I've struggled and all the people in my family were so clever, they were so smart, except for me. But you know what the worst thing is, she says? The worst thing is that today I got home and my mother said, honey, it's okay if you don't go to seminary or university or go on to higher education. We will love you anyway. She was trying to be helpful and supportive, but my own mother didn't believe in me. I was crushed. I felt so bad for this young woman sitting there, feeling like she was inadequate, like she was not enough, that she wasn't as good as the rest of her family. And suddenly it hit me. This girl was in my class. I gave an advanced class and ironically, of all the people in that class, she always got the questions and the answers before anybody else. And that class was full of brilliant students, some of which who went on to incredible universities like Cambridge. She couldn't be dumb. And suddenly it dawned on me, she wasn't. That class that I gave, I gave not going through the text inside, but saying everything out loud, translating everything for them before we tore it apart and analyzed it. And I asked her, have you ever been tested for a reading disability? She says, no. I said, tomorrow morning, you go to school and ask for this test. She's almost finished school and the results come back that she's challenged in the way that she reads. So of course she's not performing. The words are this jumbled mass she needs to figure out before she can even access the ideas. Anything that was said to her where she didn't need to read, she excelled, she was brilliant. She turned her life around almost overnight. That is the difference between what happens when you need a shifra and you get a pua, or when you need a pua and you get a shifra. Yocheved means God's honor. God's honor is static. It demands greatness of us. Yocheved changes the child in order to do that. She is God's greatness after all. But Miriam is Merim. Her mother had tried to raise her when she needed someone to reach right in and say, no, there's a mistake here. Someone's not seeing something right. That changed her life. So I beg each and every one of you that is watching this, whether this is for you, or for people in your life that need this encouragement or development. Tell people what you need. If they're giving you one and you need the other, let them know. Not everyone always knows what's going on inside of you. And if you're the parent or the role model, reach out to your child and say, what do you need from me? Do you need me to be a shifra or a pua? Shabbat Shalom. That's all for today's Good Week Israel. Hope we've helped you start your week off with a smile. I'm Emmanuel Kadosh and see you next week.